Introducing Budweiser Zero. Zero percent alcohol, zero grams of sugar. Full Budweiser flavor. For all the moments you want a beer and need to stay on your game. Budweiser Zero. Zero compromise. I received a text message on Sunday morning uh, with a link to a song, a song that was very familiar, but then I noticed the words were a little bit different. Uh, we have Mr. Mike Armstrong with Ooh. us now, who has spent some time in Chillicothe, and you're singing about Chillicothe now, aren't you? Yeah, I I, um, I got the idea for this song, and I was hoping that some of the uh, Chillicothe people would find it interesting and enjoy it, but uh, especially the old timers like me, because I've made a point of putting in a lot of places that don't even exist anymore. Right. Um, but I was, I was very surprised by the reaction. I mean, I posted it Saturday afternoon. And by the time I went to bed Sunday night, there were over 2000 views on YouTube. And I think we're up around 4,500 now. So I, I, I was overwhelmed by that. I had no idea that it would be so well received. They call that going viral. <laughs> yes. My first and probably last viral experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, as you mentioned, the, the song is uh, uh, Johnny Cash made it famous with I've Been Everywhere. And you took those lyrics and, and changed them around, brought a lot of locale to this. And uh, you and I were talking just a moment ago about you're a native to Chillicothe. So a lot of these businesses, road names and, and parks and schools, some no longer exist, but uh, they also ring true with people who are from Chillicothe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what I'm finding is that a lot of the people are uh, reacting with sort of a nostalgic attitude. And the process of writing the song was very nostalgic for me. You know, I was talking to a friend about um, whether there were songs about Chillicothe. And shortly after that, I was listening to the Johnny Cash version of I've Been Everywhere. And I thought, well, you know, that could, there are a number of versions of that. And I thought, well, that maybe that could be a Chillicothe song. And after that, it sort of took on a life of its own. Uh, the, the chorus and the introduction came pretty quickly, but the list of places was quite a challenge. Um, the first thing I had to do was create a list of places from mostly from my memory. And uh, that list approached 200 places. <laughs> and as I'm sure you know, you, you can't just randomly list places. So uh, it has to, and still make it a song. So um, I, that that really was the challenge to first find the places and then figure out how to work them into the verses because they require a, a certain amount of alliteration and rhyming in order to get the song to flow. Um, so it was a lot of fun to do. I mean, I, I love being born and raised in Chillicothe and, um, you know, so many of those places have a special place in my heart. And clearly, uh, they do for many other people, too. Yeah. I, I did not take time to count how many locales are mentioned here, but uh, I'm going to guess there's 60 or close to them. Uh, actually, there are, there's close to 70 in the verses, um, but there are other references in the chorus. And I, I think it's closer to 90. Uh, but but uh, that count was some time ago. Anyway, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, some people might say, well, it had to be easy to put those together, but as you said, quite challenging. And you couldn't just pull them out of a hat, could you? Because you, you had to, like you say, kind of sew them together so that they would have some rhythm yeah, to them yeah. and, and fit right in. Right. So what right. were some that and, uh, didn't make the cut? <laughs> well, there were there were quite a few, uh, not because I didn't want to put them in, but just because I, I couldn't fit them in. But, um, you know, I uh, my I tried to 
put some things in that related to various friends of mine and, and family members. Like, for example, my father back in 1950 was co-owner of the Cozy Inn. Um, uh, my mother, a uh, good example would be my mother worked for decades at Smith Jewelers, but I couldn't quite figure out how to work that into the, into the song. So, but one of the biggest challenges of the song was, you know, once, once I got all the words put together and it, it sounded right, is uh, you cannot breathe. You cannot breathe during a, um, uh, during a verse. And if you watch, actually the person who created the song originally was in, in the United States, it was Jeff Mack wrote the song in Australia back in the 50s. And then Hank Snow made it popular in the early 60s with the American version. Um, and then Johnny Cash did the song in the in the 90s. Right. But um, if you watch Hank Snow or Johnny Cash do it, uh, they have great lung capacity because there's there's no way you can stop and take a breath and still do the song. So that was one of the big challenges that may not be completely obvious when you when you listen to the song. I, I was always amazed at uh, Cash's ability to string these words together and not fumble through them. I would have been all over the yeah. place on this. Do, do you plan to perform this live at all? No, I do not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not a performer. Uh, I was in the Presbyterian Church choir for ten years. That's as far as it went. Well, certainly, I, I'm sure if we could have you show up with the Feast of the Flowering Moon sometime or something like that, we'd love to have you to to perform it live. But uh, I understand it's it's a a challenge to do, no question. <laughs> well, it, it's. I mean, I can I can do the breath part, but um, and I can say the words, but I'm not I'm not really a performer. And what you know, one of the challenges I had was I was very naive about making the recording. I thought that I could once I got the song going that I could probably go down into my basement with my iPad playing the karaoke version of the music and record it onto my iPhone in uh, a voice message. But uh, as you might guess, there's a reason recording stars don't do that. It, it sounded horrible. So I put so much work into it, I didn't want to just drop the project. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try a sound studio. So I went to a place called Dreamcatcher Studio in uh, Reynoldsburg and worked with a sound engineer whose name is Rizzo and he was great. He knew that I was a novice and uh, I would I would sing a part and he'd play it back to me if I didn't like it. He'd just have me do it again. And uh, so w without that, it, it would not have been the same. Um, you know, w it wouldn't have sounded as good as it does. And the other, you know, I should also give credit to uh, my wife of Arlene Francis film, film flam studio fame. She put together the video and she's uh, uh, very techie and I, I would not have been able to do that on my own. Well, in putting the video together, you, you've got a lot of older photos that fit right well along and with it. I, I have well. a collection. Of, I have a collection of old postcards. Yeah. Uh, and I focused on Columbus and Chillicothe, and all of virtually all of those photos are um, uh, old postcards, and many of which are from. Uh, the beginning of the uh, 20th century. You know, some of them are actually from the uh, the teens, uh, the 19 like 1920, 1930s. It, very suitable. It fit right in with with everything that you were doing there. Um, th this certainly is a, a labor of love for a one shot deal, maybe, but. I have a feeling this is going to take off. Uh, you, like you said, in just a handful of days nearly 5,000 views on it. And 
I think it's going to continue to increase as the days go on. <laughs> yes, and and I <clears throat> I'd be remiss if I didn't mention also that um, I got uh, a lot of feedback help from my best friend of fifty seven years, John Dowler. Uh, we went to high school together, and uh, if you notice at the end of the video, um, the video was in memory of his wife who died in October, Debbie Dowler. And she was um, a very good friend since high school. And uh, she and John had been married for 32 years. So, um, yeah, when we saw that, the that had some special meaning. When we saw her photo, we, we thought, uh, yeah, we just lost her not long ago. And uh, right. yeah. happy that she did that in her memory, certainly. Well, uh, anything you want to mention to wrap things up here today? Can I introduce Arlene Francis? Absolutely. Hey, Arlene Francis. <laughs> Does she want to be introduced? That's the question. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so she she's the one who put it all together, and it, it was I a can. it Hi. was a big it was a big challenge to um, coordinate all of the music with the the video and uh, and a funny story. If you notice the picture. At the beginning of me, you might notice I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> and uh, that was a picture taken many decades ago uh, in costume. And ironically, at the same time, the picture of Arlene at the end of the video was taken about the same time, but it was before we knew one another. Right. I was going to a Halloween party and I rented that costume. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just a funny coincidence. Yeah. So funny how we things now, stick around yeah. every time, huh? <laughs> yes. And so we now we thought we had to put those into the video somehow. But uh now we we keep both those pictures on the sideboard and jokingly tell people we met in a dance hall in Wyoming <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> the story fits, man. You gotta go with it. It's yeah. gonna work, right? Uh, Mike and Arlene, thank you so much for your time. And uh, if you ever get back to Chilla Coffee again, give us a, ho a holler. And uh, we'll certainly give the song yeah. a play a, a time or two. Well, thanks for the opportunity to tell folks about my song. And I'm, I'm so happy that it's been well received and people are enjoying it. Thanks again. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>